Hello. So, this week we are looking at the play Oedipus the King by the playwright Sophocles. Sophocles was of a younger generation to Aeschylus. He knocked Aeschylus off of his spot as the top playwright in Athens, and he won the Grand Dionysia with this play that we're about to read called Oedipus the King. So I'm going to read to you the very final lines of this play, read or um, said by the chorus. Uh, and there are going to be some spoilers in this video. So if you, if you want to go into this play completely unprepared, then I would suggest that you stop watching now, read the play, and then come back and watch the rest of the video. If you don't mind having spoilers, or if you're familiar with the story already, then you can continue watching. Okay, so the final lines of the play, read by the chorus, say, Thebans, that man is the same Oedipus whose great mind solved the famous riddle. He was a most powerful man. Which of us, seeing his glory, his prestige, did not wish his luck could be ours? Now look at what wreckage the seas of savage trouble have made of his life. To know the truth of a man, wait till you see his life end. On that day, look at him. Don't claim any man as God's friend until he has passed through life and crossed the border into death, never having been God's victim. And so it ends. Now, the chorus in Greek plays was a large group of men on stage. They would be dressed in robes. They would have huge masks. They had to speak loudly. They would all speak together so that their voices could echo around the huge arena in which this play was being performed. So it was very dramatic, as you can imagine. Um, so this chorus, they're saying, look at this man, Oedipus. We all used to think he was great. Who would not have envied him? Now look at him. He is broken. He is destroyed. Um, and what has happened to him is that he's gone wandering up into the mountains and he's gouged his own eyes out, all right? And he's going wandering through the wind-swept hills. He is a, a, a sight to see. He's in, he's in a real state of misery. And why? Because he was gods, or when, when the Greeks say gods, lower G, they mean the gods, the various gods that the Greeks believed in. Um, Oedipus was these gods' victim. So he hadn't done anything wrong in particular, but the gods had turned against him. They had destroyed him for, for some reason, which we, we don't really know why. How had they destroyed him? Well, they had brought upon him a terrible fate, a fate which he had tried to outrun, but one that he could not outrun, because in the Greek worldview, your fate will catch you. And sometimes... Even trying to run away from your fate is what will make your fate come to pass. And that's exactly what happened with Oedipus. So Oedipus was born uh, as a little boy to, uh, to these two parents who we meet. We meet his mother, uh, and her name is Jocasta. His father, by the time the play begins, is already dead. Okay, um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. So Oedipus was born... To these parents, and, and his parents were told that there was a prophecy that this child would kill his father and sleep with his mother. Horrifying. So the parents didn't know what to do. They freaked out and they tried to get rid of this child. Uh, I won't go into too much detail, but they left him up. You'll, you'll read more of this in the play. They left him up in the mountains and they tried, they put a spike through his heels. A shepherd found him. The shepherd then took mercy on this boy and went and gave him to another couple to raise. And this couple raised him as if he was their, as if he was their son. Then when he was a grown-up, Oedipus was told the same prophecy, that he would sleep with his mother and kill his father. He thought that the parents who had raised him were his real biological mother and father. He'd never been told differently. And so in order to try and escape his fate... He leaves those parents and goes running away to a new town. On the way, he is involved in a kind of road rage incident in which he gets angry and he kills a man who later turns out to be his father, though he did not know this when he was killing him. 
Because he's killed this man, who was the king of, at the time, the queen is now a widow. She doesn't have a, a husband anymore. Oedipus arrives. He solves the riddle of the Sphinx, which you'll read more about in the play. So he becomes a kind of hero in the town. Because the queen is a widow, she needs a husband. He's a big deal. He's a new guy in town. They get married. They have children. Arr, not good. Not good. But he doesn't know what he's doing. Neither does his mother know. So he tried to outrun his fate. His parents tried to outrun their fate by getting rid of him. right? But in the end, it all came full circle. So that's the kind of background to the story. Now the story opens up far into this whole saga um, when there is a new curse upon this town and Oedipus who freed the town from its previous curse which had been placed on it by this evil sphinx he managed to solve the riddle of the sphinx and rid the town of a plague now he says that he will rid the town of this new plague again and the Greeks had this idea that if there was a plague, if there was some kind of sickness, it must be a manifestation of a of, of moral corruption or of sin of some kind. So he pledges to rid the city of this moral corruption. Little does he know that the moral corruption is himself because he's sleeping with his own mother and killed his own father. And the journey, the, the play is then a journey of very uncomfortable self-discovery. The audience knows more about who Oedipus is from the start than Oedipus knows himself. There is a prophet called Tiresias who is blind, and this blind prophet is the only one who knows the truth. He can tell Oedipus the truth about who he is, but Oedipus doesn't want to accept this. Finally, then, when he discovers the truth about who he is, he rips out his own eyes so that he can be physically blind in the way that he was mentally, emotionally, psychologically blind before that point. So, this story is about an uncomfortable, terrifying, horrifying journey of self-discovery. Um, it's about fate. It's about the role that the gods play in people's lives. It's about family. It's about the ancient... Greek and ancient worlds fear that the family, which was the central structure, the most important thing, that that could somehow become corrupted and that those who were corrupting it would be blind to the way in which they were doing it. So this is, of course, happening in the most extreme way, a son sleeping with his mother and killing his father. But that can also be seen as a kind of metaphorical perversion of the family that the Greeks that the ancients feared happening in some way. It's also about the idea that maybe if we were to see some part about ourselves that we don't want to see it would be terrifying to us or that we are um, blocking something that we don't want to know about ourselves. This is a fairly common concept today in modern psychology that maybe there's something that you are living in denial about and that if that was to come to the surface, it would be frightening. So these are all the kinds of ways in which this play can be read and there are many other ways as well. So I hope you enjoy reading it. Enjoy is maybe the wrong word. I hope you find it interesting and um, I'd like you to bring your own ideas and analysis to it. Thank you. Enjoy.